Сейчас я предоставляю слово представителю Афганистана послу Афганистан, Затилу Танин. Thank you, Mr. President. At the outset, I would like to thank Mr. Jan Kovic, Special Representative of the Secretary General, for briefing the Council via video and for his leadership of uh, uh, United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan, especially at this very important juncture in my country's history. And I thank him in uh, particular for his uh, continued commitment to Afghanistan throughout its uh, transition. I also welcome the presence of uh, Mr. Fedotov, Executive Director of the United Nations Office of Drug and Crime, here today. I'm grateful to Australia, and particularly to Ambassador Quinlan, for their continued leadership on Afghanistan on the Council. I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome the Secretary General's recent report on the situation in Afghanistan. Mr. President, this is a pivotal moment for Afghanistan. We are at the last stage of our country's historical presidential elections. The democratic transition is the cornerstone of the Afghan-led and Afghan-owned progression to peace, stability, and prosperity. Mr. President, the, pres the presidential elections on uh, 5th April and on 14th June generated an unprecedented surge of democratic spread in Afghanistan. It is remarkable to witness my country emerging after decades of conflict as a vibrant young democracy, one characterized by widespread engagement in the political process. This has been demonstrated by rallies attended by thousands, debates uh, that were broadcast, broadcast and viewed through, throughout the country, media coverage and information exchange on phone, computer, and television screens, and candidates' public outreach, not only in the capital, but significantly countrywide. In an exceptional show of faith in democracy, Afghan cast their ballots despite intimidation by the Taliban and other extremist and terrorist groups so that uh, they could have a say in the country's political destiny. They dipped their fingers in ink boldly, asserting their right to choose a leader to, in defiance of threats to their lives and safety. In doing so, they voted not only for a candidate, but also for peace, for the advancement of the gains made in the last 12 years and for a better future. They did so by the millions in numbers that exceeded expectations in both first and second rounds. All segments of the populations participated, including women and all ethnic groups in all provinces of the country, in the cities, in, or in the rural areas, in the south, north, east, and west. Mr. President, dozens of uh, national institutions and thousands of citizens played a role in ensuring, a, ensuring the demonstration, the administration, integrity, and legitimacy of the first entirely Afghan-managed electoral process. Thousands of independent, independent domestic and international observers and candidate monitors covered the polling stations and continue to oversee the entire electoral cycle. We are grateful to the international community for standing with Afghan people and for providing technical, financial, and logistical, uh, logistical resources to enable Afghan institutions to successfully hold elections. We appreciate the support of the United Nations, including the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, to national electoral institutions and their management of a peaceful democratic transition. Mr. President, we note with pride the professionalism and competence exhibited by 
Afghan security institutions during the election period. Their dedication allowed elections to take place despite serious security threats. Moreover, careful planning, including through training of hundreds of female police and over 2,000 civilians and the recruitment of over 13,000 female searchers allowed for the active participation of diverse segments of the population on polling day. We were deeply saddened by the tragic loss and injury of civilians, election personnel, observers and Afghan security forces who put their lives at risk to protect the future of the country. We deplore the attacks against the infrastructure of, elect uh, of election institutions, including the central office of the Independent Election Commission in Kabul, and even attacks on candidates and their supporters. However, the Afghan people's near blanket defiance of extremist threat sends a strong message that the Taliban no longer have the ability to destabilize the country. Despite the tragic loss, uh, losses suffered during the elections, peace and democracy have clearly triumphed in Afghanistan. Mr. President, we note uh, the steps taken by the Independent Election Commission, IEC, and the Independent Election Complaints uh, Commission, IECC, to detect fraudulent uh, votes and to manage complaints in the first round, including through the blacklisting of electoral workers liable for infractions. Election bodies are again managing issues raised regarding the electoral process in the second round, attempting to avoid potential crisis and to protect the legitimacy of our historic elections. These efforts aim to assure the integrity and transparency of the electoral process and uphold constitutional and electoral law. We appreciate the United Nations' readiness to stand up for the interest of the Afghan people by supporting the integrity of the Afghan-led, Afghan-managed electoral process, which will lead to the establishment of a new government that legitimately reflects the will of, Af of the Afghan people. We see the United Nations support of the Afghan, Afghan process as a positive uh, step towards addressing the political concerns of the second round. Mr. President, as Afghanistan transitions uh, from the first time, for the first time, from one democratically elected president to the next, we continue to focus on the steps necessary for the country to move decisively towards full ownership and leadership in the transformation decade. Afghan security, in, security institutions are assuming full responsibility throughout the country as combat operations by the international forces near uh, their conclusion. The future elected president of Afghanistan will continue to prioritize a constructive relationship with our international partners, starting by signing a bilateral security agreement with the United States and followed by the finalization of the agreement on NATO's training, advising and assistance role in post-2014 Afghanistan. In this regard, we look forward to the upcoming NATO summit in Cardiff on 4th September. The country's progress towards sustainability and self-sufficiency depends upon the ability of Afghan institutions to perform key governance and uh, service delivery functions and to promote economic development. This will require the continued support and assistance of the international community, as set out in the Tokyo Mutual Accountability Framework, TMAF, adopted in Tokyo in 2012. We welcome the next ministerial meeting in, on Tokyo Mutual accountability framework to be held in uh, London in November of this year as a forum for renewing and reinvigorating the mutual commitments necessary for Afghanistan's long-term prosperity. As Afga Afghanistan moves towards a new beginning, the interlinked challenges of uh, achieving security, peace, good governance, and development will continue to loom large. We were re remind reminded of long-term challenges to development uh, last month by 
devastating uh, floods in Badakhshan province. In addition, we recognize that illegal drugs and uh, narcotics continue to undercut our legitimate development path. And for this reason, we will continue to implement our national drug uh, control strategy and con call on our regional and international partners to focus on solutions which reduce demand and combat regional and global illicit net networks. Understanding that, that terrorism and extremism continue to be the greatest uh, impediment to development in Afghanistan and the region, we will continue to focus on peace and reconciliation efforts with the Taliban, uh, as well as other measures, including the anti uh, money laundering law recently passed uh, by the upper house of the Afghan National Parliament. The active role of all citizens, women, uh, men, and children will be vital to overcoming our shared challenges in this regard. Mr. President, regional engagement will continue to be crucial to the peace, stability, and success of the transformation decade. We believe that it's important to build up on the achievements of the last decade to solidify and expand a workable framework of uh, bilateral and multilateral mechanisms with our neighbors and the wider region, as well as strengthening relations with the Islamic world. To this end, we look forward to the upcoming Heart of Asia ministerial meeting to be held in uh, Tianjin, China on 29 August. As Afghanistan expands its uh, multifaceted cooperation with our regional partners, we expect our neighbors to continue to work towards regional stability. The recent operations of Pakistani forces in northern Waziristan, which led to the displacements of thousands of families to Afghanistan's host province, and the associated uh, loss of life is a serious source of concern for the government of Afghanistan. We urge the Islamic Republic of Pakistan to prioritize the greater security of Afghanistan in the region at this crucial time. Mr. President, the Afghan government is committed to a swift, successful conclusion of the electoral process. Preparations are well underway for the first ever democratic and peaceful transfer of power in Afghanistan. All government institutions have commended, uh, commenced uh, their uh, transition planning and uh, an interministerial committee has been assigned to prepare for the official inauguration of our incoming president. We look forward to welcoming the dignitaries of all our international and regional partners to this, to this occasion. When we do so, Mr. President, we will re remember that Afghanistan and our international partners have made tremendous sacrifices to ensure that war remains a relic of the past. It's essential that the country does not return to the days when uh, bullets rather than ballots decided the country's political fate. In the post-Taliban Afghanistan, no tenet has been more cherished than the idea that stability and legitimacy is a profound necessity. This principle has motivated considerable investment in terms of dollars spent and lives lost. And it is curtailment would carry incurring consequences for the country and its people. It's our fundamental responsibility to ensure that peace and democracy, and democracy are secure in Afghanistan today, tomorrow, and throughout the transformation decade. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank you, Representative of Afghanistan, for that statement. I now give the floor to members of